Hi everybody and welcome to this Halloween special. Today I'm going to show you how you can create the Halloween music for games. We're going to talk about templates, instrumentation and uh, how you arrange a typical Halloween track. If you're new to my channel be sure to subscribe, hit the like and the notification bell so that you get the notice when I release new videos. Let's take the tour! Right, so let's first uh, make a quick playthrough of this track called Frankenstein Castle. It was uh, originally commissioned for a game by Come to Play. Let's listen. Right, so as you can hear, this uh, music piece was made to loop, so this is a typical in-game loop. It's a quite short uh, music piece, but it has all the components uh, to be loopable, and uh, it has this A part, a B part, and uh, this uh, A2 climax part. Right, so as you can hear, it's a quite a quirky arrangement with these uh, twists and turns, and a quite uh, obnoxious and dissonant uh, harmonization and, uh, and melody. We're working with a lot of uh, chromatics in, in the melody. So let's begin by talking about the instrumentation. The foundation of the track here is in the bass section. We have a cello bass, a pizzicato bass, and a regular cello pizzicato. We have a violin pizzicato. And this is also dubbed with uh, some tuba staccatos. So as you can see, we have a lot of layering going on here. Let's open up the cello pizzicatos here, and we can see uh, regarding uh, melody and harmony, we have a C going down to the F sharp. And if you remember that the previous tutorial we did on uh, making uh, variations on themes, we were talking about uh, how you can make use of uh, the tritonus interval. And uh, the tritonus interval is uh, six steps, either up or down, so that makes it uh, special in that case too, because uh, say we have a C, in this case the, this track is in C. And if we go up, a tritonus uh, interval up, it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 steps. And if we're going down, it's uh, the C, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 steps. So that's uh, the only interval that has the same steps upwards and downwards. And that makes it a kind of special interval. And it's a uh, really annoying and dissonant sound. So the base of this track is uh, something like this. So uh, we're working with this uh, tritonus interval in, uh, in the harmony, in the background harmony here, because we have this F sharp. And we're alternating the bass between the C and the F sharp, which you can see down here. So that makes it a really special and outwardly sounding. So that's in the bass here. And if we only solo the cellos, it sounds like this. And then we add the violas on top, playing this uh, the C, F sharp and A. And we have actually spoken about this before, because um, if you have a, a foundation bass note in 
really far down in the base and you play basically anything on top. As long as it's um, played very high up in the register, it really doesn't matter. It can sound uh, quite fine, even if we would move these notes, uh, say, to, an, to a B instead. <laughs> that also works. It sounds uh, kind of fun, fun, actually. Maybe we could move some of these. Just for the fun of it. And of course these uh, cellos are also doubled with this uh, tubas, the staccato tubas. And as you can see I'm having the velocity quite low here. It's in the mid-range around 66 something. Because we don't war want these really harsh tones. We want a more mellow side of the tubas. And the same thing goes for the staccatos, uh, the cello pizzicatos. And here the track changes to uh, from that uh, C F sharp to the uh, G sharp and D. So we move uh, a whole step up. Basically the same uh, kind of uh, melodic relation. So it's still uh, sounding quite outerworldly. And that's uh, what we want with this uh, Halloween themed song. We want it to sound a bit weird, a bit uh, quirky. And you also see that we have these contra bassoons and the bassoons coming in after a little while here. We want to introduce uh, instruments uh, one at a time or a few at a time. And I think it's a, it's a quite nice layer to have the bassoons and tubas and cellos. Right, so there we have the melody being introduced, and it's um, to begin with, it's a quite a fun little spacey sound uh, made with Zebra. I was actually working with the sine wave first, but um, I made it a little bit more interesting by adding a few more harmonics here in the series, just to make it a little bit more a little bit more harmonics in the upper range, so we so we can have a more more spread in the in the frequency spectrum. So it would sound too dull if we just had sine waves. So we just add a few more harmonics up here to get a more full sound. Not full as in a in a sawtooth, but a more full like a triangle maybe. And you can also see I have some heavy heavy vibrato on that on the tuning here to give it uh, that uh, spooky vibe which is typical for spooky halloween tracks and, and ghostly uh, ghostly tracks and furthermore this uh, ghost voice uh, lead is uh, dubbed by some chinese gusheng sither and it's uh, from the original logic stock sounds and it sounds like this But we also dubbed this, we layered this with an additional sound to get a more full sound with the Indonesian gamelan, which is a kind of bell sound. Let's listen to this one isolated. And that is to add a little bit more harmonics in, in the upper range to get this more full sound like we, we talked about earlier here. So it's the same thing here as with the basses in our track. We layer a few sounds in the basses there. And the same thing for the melody, we layer a few sounds to get a more full-blown sound. So these, uh, all these melodies together sound like this. And 
And it is uh, B part of, of the A part, the A2 part, so to speak. We uh, get rid of the ghost voice here and add some clarinets to dub uh, in the background. And generally, flute sounds work uh, very well in this kind of Halloween tracks. But we also replace the ghost voice uh, melody with uh, some uh, patches from the Omnisphere library called Tynesmith. And it's a kind of Simbra uh, Kalimba kind of sound. And we also dub this with the Maldives Island, which is uh, more of a bell sound. And I think that this uh, layering is uh, very effective here because we get a wide spread of different uh, sounds, which is uh, quite different in each sound is very different. Right, so that's uh, a little bit about the melody in, in the track. Then we have some, uh, some filler sounds, which uh, make this uh, sound even more outerworldly. And we have a space patch here. Let's uh, open up Omnisphere and see what kind of sound that is. So it's a very weird, modular, spacey kind of sci-fi sound. And it works quite well in this context because we want to, as I said earlier, introduce uh, kind of atmospheric sounds, uh, outer-worldly sounds. And you can also hear a, hear a distorted guitar here in the background, sounds like this. And it basically just uh, plays that uh, that root note, the C, and the G. And another important sound here to fill out these places where we don't have melody is this uh, mandolin tremolo which is uh, a patch from uh, the play, from the Quantum Leap Raw library. A mandolin tremolo with a slow, with a slow kind of tremolo. But we can also filter this sound using the mod wheel on our keyboard. So we can make the sound kind of grow a little bit. And that's, uh, that's also very effective in this uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, kind of uh, cues, where we want to have a little bit of spooky vibe. Right, so in this B part we have a kind of a question-answer melody, so we have this. Right, so we have the violin spizzicatos here, and you can see what kind of phrase they're playing here. And this is, uh, here's a nice tip that uh, I use a lot when uh, making these kind of uh, string runs. And that is if you have, uh, if you just record, say we recorded this on the keyboard because it's, it's uh, really hard to play these exact uh, repetitions. 
So if we play this on the keyboard, this really, it's a simple little phrase. We can actually just uh, mark this and hold Alt and copy this. Like this, and then we can copy them again. But drag down the velocity slightly here. And now we have a, a nice uh, repetition string run. So that's a, a tip if you want to create these string runs really quickly. And we also have a harp and a banjo introduced. And that's uh, because I want to do shift uh, instrumentation slightly, not too much. We're still uh, using some of that uh, uh, same instrument introduced in the A part. Uh, you often want to keep some instruments throughout your track so it's not uh, a totally different kind of uh, instrumentation in the B part compared to the A part. So keep some of the instruments from the A part in your B part. And uh, for this kind of cue I think it's really important that you... I mean, you know it's going to be a Halloween themed game cue. So create your template with that in mind and select uh, the cello spizzicatos, pizzicatos. Uh, tubas, bassoons, and these kinds of instruments that uh, that you feel would work for this kind of cue before you actually start to compose the track. But then of course you can add uh, instruments on the go as you go later on in the track. Right, so we also have some piano here in, in this B section. And that is to really uh, pronounce these, uh, these important uh, melody notes. So we have the bells there repeating the phrase. And we're also introducing some, uh, some drums, some timpani here in, in the B section. We already have the marching kit from, from halfway through this uh, A section. So we're just introducing a little bit more instruments uh, to make it more exciting on, on the B part. Then of course on the, on the C part or A2 climax part, we're going to introduce uh, even more instruments and, and have that final climax before the track loops back to our A part. So you can see here, if I have this, uh, the viola, pizzicato and harp selected, you can actually see that we have the harp first playing, then we have an answer in the, in the viola, and the harp takes over a little bit, and the viola again. And then we have the climax, the, the A2 part here. With more of everything. More is more. And I think for this kind of silly or <laughs> quirky Halloween track, we can actually just uh, go overboard here on the, on the final section. So we have a, a lot of the drums going on there for the final section. And I played all this on the keyboard. It's uh, not a lot of programming for this track. It's rather more playing playing on the, on the keyboard to get this uh, kind of marching kit uh, snare vibe. And this is a patch from um, the Quantum Leap. I really like this old orchestral marching kit. It's, uh, it has a few years on its back, but uh, I'm still using it on, on a lot of tracks. And it's from, from the storm drum. If you select the drum kit, uh, you have the orchestral marching kit on, on the storm drum to library. So that's the marching kit. And then we have some uh, Wagner bass, uh, bass drum to emphasize the start of this, uh, of the A2 part. 
So let's just solo the, the percussion section here and listen to this part leading up to our, to our climax. You can see that uh, some of these hits are not exactly on, on the grid, and that's because I want to have this flam kind of, kind of sound. So I really recommend that you play your, your march snares if, if possible. Of course you can program it and move around the notes, but I think it's more fun and uh, to practice also at the same time. So that's a little bit about the instrumentation. Solo the piano sounds a little bit uh, awkward, but in context it, uh, it actually sounds quite good. And this is of course a piano from the native library of, uh, of Logic. I think it has a really nice pianos that uh, works quite well in context of with other instruments. We also have a, a trombone, a trombone glide there, a crescendo, which is a cluster chord. We have that uh, the G, G sharp, and the D, and it gives it a, a nice, nice nerve. And that's also recommended when creating these tracks because, as you saw with the melody here, we have a lot of. Uh, chromatics going on. Right, so I hope you have all you need to create your own uh, Halloween songs now. If you have any questions on the libraries used or this uh, track arrangement or harmony, please write that in the comment section below. Now you can continue and watch my next video. My name is Matthias and have a great Halloween. See you in the next video. Bye.